Hello and welcome back to the second episode of Hell Dominance. Anthony here. Please remember to like and subscribe and also click that notification bell if you're enjoying what you've seen and if you want to see more. Coming up in this episode, we see X Tigers return to the jungle with the wolves and Toulouse face an inform leads rhinos. So Saturday saw two games in the Betfred. Super League, uh, which were, first of all, one was supposed to be for Friday night, and the other one was supposed to be for Saturday afternoon. So first of all, we have Castleford Tigers versus Warrington Wolves, which was slated to be played on Friday night, um, but was shifted to Saturday to give some TV airtime. The Tigers host the Wolves at the jungle, and in what will be Castleford's uh, former coach, Daryl Powell's former vi uh, visit. Uh, <laughs> take two. The Tigers will host the Wolves at the jungle in what would be Daryl Powell's first visit back to his old stomping ground. Powell spent almost nine years at West Yorkshire Club, famously taking to the Tigers to two Challenge Cup finals and one Grand Final, though he lost on all three occasions. Going into this fixture, Castleford fell to a 34 points to 20 defeat against the Leeds Rhinos at Magic Weekend last weekend, whilst Warrington put the emphasis dis emphatic display in a big win over the Catalans Dragons. Castleford will be still without the likes of Callum McClelland, Jake Truman, who is out for the rest of the season, and Alex Sutcliffe, whilst Liam Watts is banned. However, talisman Paul McShane will return from suspension and Gareth O'Brien has been named in Lee Bradford's squad. For Warrington, Mike Cooper and Kyle Amor are still out with injury whilst Gareth Widder will be out for the rest of the season with that dislocated shoulder, the fourth time that he has suffered that injury in four years. George Williams escaped a ban for a late hit against Leeds. I'm sorry, against Catalan. Now, for the teams. So, with Warrington Wolves have missing Gareth Widdop, there is a change where Stefan Ratchford goes back to fullback and Riley Dean comes in at halfback in the minimal change to the starting lineup for the Warrington Wolves. Matty Nicholson continues after his um, performance against Catalan's last time out in the second row. But Oliver Holmes comes up from the bench to start at least forward. This means that Jason Clark and Connor Wrench comes into the bench, while Jason Clark, oh, sorry, as Jason Clark started at least forward the last game. Bit of a pacey squad, bit of a younger squad, and something to build on as Coach Daryl Powell is looking for the formula to get towards those top six places. Castleford though make a few changes. First of all, Chase Blair comes in for Jake Malmo. Greg Eden and Danny Richardson continue at halfback. While Paul McShane does indeed start for um, Adam Milne, who drops out of the squad completely. Alex Meller completes the, uh, competes in the game, despite not being originally called into the 21-man squad. But on the bench, backing up the starting lineup, Daniel Smith and uh, Suale Mitagi uh, continues, while Alex Meller and Jason Carey Carey are the bench in completion. It was Castleford who got the ball rolling in this opening few minutes, as on the sixth minute, the ball was slinged right uh, to the left hand edge by McShane. And then uh, Blair, who over the top pass, found Darrell Alfords, who went in for the opening score of the game on the sixth minute. Danny Richardson hits the cut, hits the touch finder, and it's six nil. Then it was the same sort of play once again. It was Greg Eden who's playing standoff today that set up both of Alfred's tries and Danny Richardson converted again. And inside 12 minutes, it's 12-0 to Castleford. 12 became 18 after 
Some decent setup play by Danny Richardson, keeping everything calm, finding his forwards, finding the gaps. And then Paul McShane found a gap to kick into with Danny Richardson on the chase to score Castleford's third try of the game. He hits it another conversion. That's 18-0 to Castleford. And we're not even at the 20 minute mark now. But after some stellar play, Danny Richardson adds a drop goal to calm everything down again, keeping the clock ticking over and keeping hold of the ball. But then a great inside ball by, again, Richardson finds Nile Avalds, who went over for the try, but in the same motion. After the video referee had checked the grounding, had seen Evolds score, but Evolds' game was over as the fullback shoulder was popped out. Who does that sound like to you, Warrington fans? Here we go. Great despairing tackle by Jake Wardle, but the ball is down there. It's a try. Just to confirm, put the icing on it. There we go. Video referee agreed. Then we come into the second half as Na uh, Jason Carry Carry appears on the pitch, and we're in the 48th minute, and it's still all Castleford camped in the Warrington half. Jason Carry Carry steps off his right foot and gets through some will-be defenders to score again for Castleford. Richardson misses the easy kick, but it's 27 points to nil. Some life came into Warrington though, as it was uh, Ben Curry getting on the end of a decent grubber into the in goal area, and Matty Ashton followed up George Williams' um, break so that he can score, with Ratchford converting both of the tries. Oh, sorry, the first try he missed, the second one he converted. Then came the talking point as Chase Blair went into a tackle with the Warrington man. I think it was Connor Wrench. Here it is. He went high. Tried to push off, but it was in the face. And Blair was sent to... He was sent off. Castleford though um, needed a bit of an uproar but it was Daryl Clark who got over the try line for Warrington and after we saw that in the Magic Weekend last week Daryl Powell kept fight uh, Daryl Clark kept fighting and he scored underneath the sticks confirmed by the video referee but Castleford kept going and this time it was uh, Alex Sutcliffe, who gets on the scoring charts. He gets on the end of a decent ball to the left of the post, and he goes over. A good little short ball and a good line by the former Leeds man. Richardson added the extras, and that's the game. Almost. As Wire had the last say when former cast forward Oliver Holmes went over for the final try, which Ratchford converted. Richardson hit a penalty to complete the scoring. It was Casper's day in the sun with the 35 points to 22 victory over Warrington, who looked like the shadows of their magic weekend selves. The second game of the day was between Toulouse and Leeds Rhinos and Toulouse made it back-to-back -back victories for the first time in Super League as they defeated relegation rivals Wakefield Trinity last week. The French side pr produced a superb second half come fight back to clinch what could prove a pivotal victory this season. They will now take on the Leeds side that will travel with an understrength squad after suffering some further injuries and suspension strife last week. They were able to overcome Castleford Tigers to record a second straight success, but the hosts will have their tails up here and will prove a tricky opponent. 
with Toulouse needing to make home advantage counting on wing to the sweltering conditions and with confidence highs they can capitalize on Leeds woes here to make it three straight wins to well and truly put the cat amongst the pigeons at the foot of the table. The game was pushed back until 7pm UK time, 8pm in France because of the sweltering conditions. This meant this is because of a record temperature heat wave over in France at this time and player welfare was put paramount before anything else. Let's go into the teams. So here are the teams from south of France. Let's start with the home tie first of all as it's the easiest as there are no changes to the 17 from Sylvain Houlet. Um, still, Oli Ashout Bot, who's done really well since going down to Toulouse and having a run in the side, um, is at fullback. With Latrell Shamkel uh, on the uh, right wing and Matty Russell on the left. Corey Norman and Tony Gigo will be pulling the strings as they do. Uh, with forwards Roman Navarre and Daniel Alvaro being the two to start off the forward battle. Nathan Peets will also provide fresh impetus as the former origin uh, dummy half looks to continue the good form and help to lose win th help to lose go on to win three from three on the bench they have lucas albert who will go in as acting halfback or even halfback depending on the needs what to lose out but harrison hansen lambert belmas and also June, Justin Sangare, who is going up against his future employers, according to uh, reports, are the backup on the bench for the forward pl plans. On the lead side, we have Max Simpson coming in in the centres in place of Zach Hardacre, who misses out. Corey Johnson and Liam Sutcliffe are the centres in the game, so that means Reese Martin goes to the second row. In the forwards, we have Mikhail Edzulecki and Sam Walters as a starting forwards, with Jared O'Connor being the acting halfback in a much changed Leeds starting lineup. But Sam Walters is the only change to the starting lineup that played against Castleford in the forwards. On the bench, it is Brad Dwyer, James Donaldson. Jack Simfield comes back onto the bench, and it's the returning Balding Thompson who completes the Leeds lineup. Now we go into the game itself, and it was Toulouse with the first attempt after Dominic Peru was held up by Gannon uh, before he got to the line. It was Romain Navarre who attempted to get the ball over the line, but the referee was there to say that he'd not on in the process of uh, attempting to get the ball down. But not long after that, Tony Gigu go started pulling the strings. After Romain Navarrete uh, did some hard yards and after the contact yards, they went to the right hand wing and the bullet pass by Gigo to uh, Shomkel saw the first try of the game, which Chris Hankinson nailed the touch liner with. They also got a penalty not long after, which took the lead out to eight points to nil. Hankinson again with the two on 19th minute. Then it was the time for the other winger to get involved. This time, Norman, Ashok Bot, great hands by Hankinson. And then pace by Matty Russell. See, I saw him in the corner as on the left edge, which Hankinson again nailed the conversion once more. To lose, we're up 14 points to nil. Here is that conversion. Great left footer conversion. To lose, almost got over the try line once more after. The Corey Norman's kick was fumbled into the hands of Danny Alvar Alvar Alvaro, but he was deemed to be offside. Apologies for the mispronunciation. After a slow play of the ball, Leeds took advantage of it. 
Brad Dwyer saw that lacks and uh, marker work to get him over the line right to the posts. Leeds started to throw the ball about a bit and they got on the break through Myler who passed on to Ash Hanley but a great pass by Ash, a uh, great tackle by Ash but saw him fail to convert. Toulouse were on the attack once more. It's coming to the end of the game and Toulouse were just drawing it out and drawing it out. But Corey Norman found Joe Bretherton, who dove over the line, which Hankinson converted for the win. Toulouse win and put pressure on Wakefield, who played tomorrow in a 20 points to 6 victory over Leeds Rhinos. After some decent fall from Leeds, they tumble down the table again after defeats in the south of France. But Toulouse got 3 from 3. So, after Friday and Saturday's games, these are where we're standing. There is clear gaps now between uh, St. Helens and Wigan Warriors, four points, which means St. Helens are now confirmed to be in the playoff picture at the end of the year. Then the uh, Huddersfield Giants are three points behind after their defeat at St. Helens, while Catalan's Dragons are yet to play and they play Salford on Sunday. Castleford Tigers now move up into 5th, with Hull moving down to 6th due to their defeat. Hull actually def um, dropped down a place before Castleford even kicked a rugby ball. Leeds Rhinos um, in, in 7th place, 3 points behind Hull now, but with the form as it is, I think Leeds might just catch them. But that depends on what Salford do, as they have a game in hand, which is against Catalan, who are not in the best of form at this moment in time. Warrington are struggling in ninth with Hull KR. If they win, go above Warrington Wolves and push them down to 10th, with Toulouse and Wakefield now sitting bottom. They play Wakefield, uh, Hull KR tomorrow. And that's it for another episode, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you so much for watching. Please remember to like, subscribe, and share this video worldwide. And also click that notification bell for any new videos like this one come out uh, on the day. And tell me what your thoughts are of the results. It's put what pressure on Wakefield Trinity now as they are bottom of the table due to Toulouse third win on the bounce. Leeds Rhinos fans, was it just the injuries and suspensions that affected you today or was it the overall play uh, due to the structures not being there for these type of players? What about you Castleford fans? Are you happy with the victory over Warrington? And was it just a blip getting beat at uh, the Magic Weekend? Or do you think that there's still a lot of work to do? Warrington fans, after the high of Magic Weekend, to be come down with a crash? against 12 men as well don't cite saints saints are a different animal to be respectful of castleford to than what castleford are at this moment in time there are still problems at warrington in my opinion but anyway tell me in the comments below in the meantime uh, i wish you all the best please stay safe share 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 this video worldwide and i'll see you in the next one all the best. Bye now.